a line into the backyard. From the other side of the yard, I have four lines for um, uh, soaker hoses, four lines of soaker hoses, one along this edge, this side here, and the other one, I just come over here, I've run a line from around there all the way across the path to here how I ran the holes under this interlocking basically, basically took the bricks out kind of counted the least number of bricks that needed as 10 and then ran it under there's like a uh, metal barrier on each side so ran the holes under each of the barriers and then dug a trench in the middle and buried the uh, the hose and so this gives me another line of soaker hose for this area and then from here I put another line running under the grass to this area here and uh, I just go to the backyard show you there's a line here for this area and there's my four-way split okay so one line now is going to this side all the way across to about there and uh, so this one line goes underneath these patio stones here and it splits to the area over there that I show and to this area here where it goes up to this section and then ending at the Japanese maple. So what I found is with the rain barrels there's not enough pressure so what I plan to do is put a pump right there with a solar panel and a battery and charge controller to drive the uh, pressure up because when I connected the uh, garden hose from the house the pressure was perfect even on the uh, inclines there was no problem so the parts are the following we got the solar panel which is a 12 volt uh, it's used to charge a 12 volt uh, battery um, it's got 20 amps as the uh, as the uh, power uh, got the charge controller which is for charging a 12 volt battery got the 12 volt battery got a timer a switch the pump some tubing some fittings uh, adapters a hose and uh, some connectors here. So these things don't come with connectors. Then I'll house these smaller components, the pump, timer, battery, and uh, charge controller in this ammunition box. This is waterproof, and the size is uh, compact, but uh, it will fit these parts. I got the cheapest component I could get just to uh, see how low of a cost it is possible to set this thing up. So the solar panel is about, um, I would say, 40, 50 bucks Canadian. Uh, charge control is about 10 or 12 bucks. Battery is about 38 bucks. Timer is about, I would say, 7 or 8 not very expensive, maybe $10 Canadian. The motor is about $40. And then the tubing, various things are a few bucks each and some leftover holes. So the way we'll connect is the solar panel connects to the charge controller, charge controller to the 
uh, battery. The battery will be connected to a timer. Timer to a switch, which then will connect to the um, the pump. The pump has the input and output. I'm not sure which one is which, but uh, should be yeah, no input is on this side, and then you can see, you might be able to see the arrows. Output is on this side. Will be connected to the uh, um, clear uh, tubing here, and will be uh, fastened using these clips. And then on the other end of the tubing, the clear tubing will be the female, the garden hose uh, connectors. I was not able to find a male one. They only had female ones, so that's why I have another one here. That's a male garden hose adapter for a garden hose. And uh, for the wiring, I have 18 gauge wiring here that will be connected using these butt connectors. So I'm going to remove this end here from the solar panel, connect them to here, and uh, put the solar panel on a pedestal. And perhaps the wiring in some sort of conduit outside, and then everything will connect to the, to the box and sealed. My solar panel powered pump. It's all contained in this ammo box. It's about uh, it's about four inches by about ten inches. That's the size of the box. I've already shown all the components. I've connected all of them uh, together. So this is the charge controller. You've got the solar coming in from here. And that's connected. Sorry, that's not. That's the timer. That's the solar uh, charge controller. And so this is connected to the solar part of the controller. Uh, the battery is connected to the battery, which is over here. So let me just connect it. So there's the battery underneath. The uh, on the other side of the charge controller is the load. The load goes into the timer, and the timer comes with a schematic for uh, wiring the switch side to the power. So basically, there's one common line that goes from the switch to the power, and then the uh, hot. The red light, the hot line, goes into the, the other side of the power, and then uh, got the neutral coming out, and uh, you got the other side of the switch coming out, and the hook to a physical switch. So this switch will override any time uh, output. Right. So right now it's off. But then the timer is off. This timer also has a uh, manual switch. Oh, there you go. That means it's on. And if I switch it on, right, you can hear the pump go. Um, so I've set it up for every day around 4:30 for 20 minutes. So behind this board, or under this board, uh, is the pump and the battery. Okay. The pump is fastened to a uh, piece of wood at the bottom. Um, that's pretty much the whole system. The next thing I need to do is put some caulking on the uh, on the outside of the hoses. Um, so let me just show the pump again. So the pump. It's connected to, there are two clear tubings, one on each side, one on each side. Alright, so I put in the arrow here for the direction of the water. This is going to connect to, these wires are, are going to be connected to the solar panel. Once it's uh, shut, it's waterproof. 
Um, so, close this off. It's waterproof. It's nice and compact. But the only concern I have is on the SLA battery, it does say to not um, have it in a confined uh, container. So, and this is pretty confined. So. We'll see what happens. I mean, I guess it could build up some uh, uh, fumes, um, in which case I would need to come up with some sort of a mesh opening or something that doesn't allow an allow animals come in. That still um, will let it air out, but I need to waterproof it somehow. So maybe put it into a wooden box. But we'll see. So I. Uh Use some clear caulking while well, it goes on white and it uh, dries clear that I had left over for some outdoor um, uh, applications and I tried my best to seal the, the openings including this one here my um, one of the least favorite things for me is uh, caulking as you can see i think i covered everything if not i guess i can always add more later right this is my solar panel mount it's made of wood uh, it's uh, angled at 30 degrees and all that's needed to be done will be to stain it because this is not pressure treated wood but after staining it uh, and sealing it we should be fine The stain I use is called the Australian Timber Oil. It's actually a water-based stain where I can simply wash off the brush. It's pretty good. I've used it for uh, my uh, outdoor table before and it's pretty good. Uh, it allows me to use just normal uh, spruce wood um, and not pressure treated. So here's the solar panel setup. I have to deal with this uh, wiring. I'm just dripping it over this branch for now. But uh, I've set the timer to go on at 4.30. So you can hear that it's going. Uh, and there's a bee because right over there is a freaking beehive. I got stung twice just servicing this uh, this motor uh, you can see it right there one here and one in my underarm for of all places the remedy is to put some honey on right away which I did so if I open it up you will see that So with this thing closed, the sound is not too bad, right? So you can see that my the uh, soaker is running pretty good on this end. Let's see how far it goes. I think it goes all the way. Well stopped so I just go across on the other line yeah, that's going pretty good let's check the other zone I mean it seems to be a lot of uh, definitely a lot of power so let's go out to the other zone okay, so this is so I have one over here, and it's just dripping, and it goes to here, 
and then the other one goes right across all the way here and uh, from here it splits into this zone over here I'll show you and this hose here goes underneath the yard to this isolated zone I do see a bit of a bit of uh, water coming there. Oh, there's a, a lot more here. So it is working. Without the motor, without the motor, the soaker here would, well, the water would not reach the soaker on this side. So, as expected, the uh, the pump should say pump not motor I guess it's similar but the pump does help quite a bit all right so we just had our first rain after I put uh, this pump into action so I just want to see how waterproof this thing is without actually putting water in it it looks pretty good um, Yeah, it looks pretty, oops, looks pretty dry. I uh, just want to see underneath. Yep, there's no, no water on. So I guess the seal is working pretty good. 